Hello, everyone. I'm really looking forward to this. It's the first time I've been on one of these calls. So I'm here to talk about uh, graph connectors and demo how you can build your own connector. Briefly, the agenda is just about providing a, a overview of graph connectors. Uh, dig into how you can go about building your own custom graph connector. We will demo that on the side. And you can also see the experiences such as, you know, how it integrates with Microsoft Search. So let's get started, given, you know, this is uh, a 15 minute session. And uh, keep your questions coming on chat. I'll try to address them maybe after the session if possible. And most of the URLs that you will see and links, I'll make sure I paste all of them in the chat. And pretty much everything I'm covering has, you know, public facing documentation. So even if you're not able to, you know, save something up, you can always, you know, go back and get those URLs. So I'll just start briefly with Microsoft Search, you know, intelligent search for work. Uh, we are all used to the experience of searching inside of office.com, SharePoint, uh, you know, Bing at work. And so it's a simple intelligent search across Microsoft 365. Your data is secure, private, and never shared. It's an experience that's consistent and familiar, and results are personalized for you and your work. So what about external non-Microsoft 365 data? How do we get those integrated so they can participate in the same experiences so that you can have data from, you know, not on-prem databases, your own line of business applications, or, you know, file shares and file servers? How can all of that participate within Microsoft Search? So that's where Graph Connectors comes in, <clears throat> right? So with Graph Connectors, developers can add their data and signals into Microsoft Graph to power similar intelligent experiences that we have today for the Microsoft 365 data. This is how you can bring your external data to participate in the same. In terms of some of the experiences that are enabled, search is of course sort of the, the, the primary and the P0, which is already generally available. Viva Topics is in preview. And then there's also additional scenarios such as intelligent discovery, security and compliance, and other people experiences such as enhancing contact cards, for example. So at very high level, when you have graph connectors enabled, the supported hubs today are office.com, SharePoint, Bing at work, like I said, Teams and Windows desktop, because this is a question we get quite often, like what about Windows desktop? They will be in preview soon. So you can search across all of these different canvases and your external data will now start participating in that. Uh, from a developer standpoint, the query experiences, the results are rendered using adaptive cards. And you also have graph search APIs for you to be, for you to be able to you know, pull that data in your, into your own system. Uh, for building your own graph connector, which is the, the development bullet you see there, that's what I will be demoing today. It's how you can configure and ingest data into M365. There's also an admin side experience to create you know, your own result type and verticals. And I'll talk about what that is. Uh, so far, we are actually you know, quite excited that we have 130 plus connectors in our system. And I'll be talking very specifically about how you can create your own custom connectors. Before I jump into the demo, I just wanted to show what the experience will be like in case my demo completely goes belly up. This is what I'm hoping to do, to demo, uh, where you can show re relevant results from non M365 sources showing up in your all tab, which is basically your main search results tab. You can also configure custom verticals so that you can have a very dedicated space for each data source. You can have multiple connections and a connection is an, is a container for your data source. You can have multiple connections inside of one vertical should you desire that. You can create custom filters on connector content, and I will show you how that is possible in the demo. So sort of jumping right in, I, I will flip between the slides and the, the demo so that you know we can go step by step and kind of walk through how to build a custom connector. So as for building your own connector, there is there are three basic Uber steps. There is creating a connection, which is a container for your external data on Microsoft Graph. The next step is registering schema, which is where you define what your data looks like in terms of labels, in terms of the different properties in your metadata. And the last step is actually ingesting items into the connection. So we have REST APIs for all of these different capabilities. So I'll just briefly for creating a connection, you just need three, three items in it. You need an ID, a name, and a description. 
and the response you get, and this is copied out of Postman, which I can also show, uh, it's basically a 201 that the connection has been created. So with that said, let me just jump into the showcase one of the links that I feel is important to start with. So the sample application I will be using is, is already on GitHub. The URL for this, I, let me just paste it as I'm talking through it. So literally all the steps you need that I'll be showing in the demo, right from registering an app in the Azure app portal to how you go about you know, configuring the application and then creating this custom connector. So what the custom connector I'm creating today is basically taking an, a CSV file with some rows in it and pushing that into M365. I'll switch over to Visual Studio to just briefly walk over the, the sample code. And so the good thing here is you can literally like, you know, fork this repository and then go make changes. And you can just start from right here to see how this experience works end to end. So the steps that I spoke about are, are all very clearly, you know, marketed as, as, uh, as methods here to create your connection, to then start, you know, you can select your connections, delete current connections. So this sample app is, is pretty powerful to get started. And I myself, I knew, I'm new on the team, so I, I used this sample application along with some of the other UX experiences to actually as part of my ramping up on the team. So I can assure you that it's actually quite easy. So what I do before I, I jump in is I want to go create the connection and then start registering the schema because that process takes a little bit of time. So I, I'll do that and then just jump back to the slides to you know talk a little more as this runs in the background. So let's go and create a connection, M365 call. Name for the connection, M365 test connection. New favorite. So as you can see, the new connection has been created. You can now see this in the M365 admin center. But what I will do is kick off the registration of the schema, which is where that is the step which is asynchronous and takes a little longer. So while that happens, I, ca I can jump back to the slides. With schema, what you do is you define your various property names that you have in your data, right? This makes it easier for M365 to, uh, for your search experience to be more uh, tailored and also uh, provide more relevant results. Uh, you, you can specify for the different search attributes, whether you want them to be searchable, whether you want them to be queryable, such as you know, in your query, on your query tabs on top, uh, retrievable and refinable. So you have a bunch of search attributes that you can set to your data. You can provide semantic labels, and we highly encourage adding more semantic labels, uh, as well as aliases, which are alternate names to the data, to the various fields, to the properties. In terms of what that REST API call looks like, the one that I'm running in the background right now, effectively, I'm, I'm defining the various properties which, you know, with those attributes that I just spoke about. And what the response you will get will be a 202 accepted, which means the call has been accepted, but asynchronously, we are now registering the schema, which can take a bit of time. The last step is about ingesting items into, my, into Microsoft Graph. Let's just go back for a second and see if the schema has been registered. Not yet, but what I can do in the meantime is just jump into this Contoso tenant that I have and then just walk through the search and admin, you know, the admin center. If I hit a quick refresh here, there's a couple of things for folks who haven't seen this before that I wanted to call out. You can see this new connection that we just created, the M365 test connection. Ignore that something's gone wrong because the schema is being registered. I did want to also call out that there are a bunch of out of box connectors, right? So for Azure DevOps and file shares, there are some connectors that, you, that have a complete UX based setup. And so I just wanted to call that out while the schema is being registered. And I just go back to my, to my connection there. So the last step, let that happen. I've, also, I've got another connection created for the purposes of this demo. So while that schema is getting registered, the next step is to push these items into your connection, right? And so the items that I spoke about are, are basically this. It, it's a CSV file with like 10 rows in it with different part names and you know inventory. And this is the, the properties that I want pushed in. So I already have a, a, a connection created 
with some of this information fed in. I did want to call out, you remember in the screenshot, I said we can create verticals. So I have created a vertical called CSV demo, which effectively all I've done is said, hey, point to this particular connection. Here's my new vertical. You can choose your content source and say, you know, this is my, uh, the name of my new vertical, which is the connector I want to use. I have the one that I populated prior. You can define additional queries, but I'm not going to do that right now along with filters. So I've just basically done straight out of the box, just selected all of those settings. So now that you've seen what that CSV file has, the steps inside of portal.azure.com are all, are all very clearly defined in the, in the GitHub uh, link that I shared. So I'll not jump into that yet. You just need a couple of uh, things like your client ID and your tenant ID, which I have plugged in both into the test application. So just to wrap up this end-to-end -end scenario, let's, you know, here's my new vertical. If I go click on that, I can see the different items now showing up in my search experience, which I pushed from my CSV. Uh, when I said they will also show up in the all tab, if I search for water dispenser, and I've been searching for this for the last few hours to make sure the demo works. So uh, there you go. You see it inside of the all tab and you see the results both you know, in your in the in its own vertical as well as in the all tab, showcasing another experience such as Bing at work. In my work tab, if I now go, you see the same results inside of all here, and this is you know it's analogous to the to the verticals that I just showed. It's populated from the same place. So you know here's end to end going from Excel, uh, you know from into a CSV into M365 and and watching the search experience. So I will minimize this for now and just go back into, you know, just wrap up a couple of things as to what's coming next and useful URLs. So for ingesting the item, the next step in, in my code, if the schema is registered. Oh, fantastic. So let's just go ahead and, and, and push all items into this current connection, though you have already seen what the end-to-end -end experience looks like. So in terms of what's new, generally available, you have the, you remember in the user experience, I said there are some out of box connectors that are already present today. And so those are the ones which are generally available. We have a bunch more in preview, such as Azure DevOps, Jira, Confluence, you know, so the, the ecosystem is only growing, like I said. We also have a partner ecosystem who are, you know, helping add more capabilities to the platform by bringing in more connectors. On the core platform improvements, I, I really wanted to call out two things. Uh, these are almost the, the, the top asks from our customers. One is about increasing the item count in each connection. Uh, today we have a limit of 700,000 per connection, and that will be going up in the next few months to 5 million, which I know a lot of our customers are excited by. And the other thing I wanted to call out is uh, schema updates. Today, when you register a schema, if you, you want to make any changes to it, you have to drop the connection and recreate things. So you will soon have the ability to update schema uh, being generally available. This is already available in the beta APIs. So the call to action, right? Uh, I think I saw Brian's already pasted some of these uh, AKMS links. Uh, but so the links to the documentation, the links to build your first graph connector, uh, what I just showcased today with the, with the sample application, uh, I, I will sh I have all of these tabs open, so I will briefly just touch upon them, so you know what you know uh, each of them is is useful for. And then there's we have two separate links on the right hand side. One is for providing general feedback, which is AKA MS Graph Connectors feedback. And if you're interested in previewing features and uh, trying out capabilities like the Graph Connector SDK, which I know was discussed a couple of weeks ago in the platform call. Uh, so you can then go to Graph Connector Preview and you know let us know if you would be interested in in working closely with us on preview features. That said, I'm almost done, but let me just briefly just walk over the different things. So, AKMS Graph Connectors. This talks about the different connector galleries where we have connectors from all of our partners, and you can go and you know look through the different connectors that are there in the system today. Uh, and so that's you know quite interesting and pretty fantastic. To build your own connector, like the one I just demoed today, that's AKMS Graph Connectors API. And you can 
you can use Postman. We have the connector API. We also have steps on how to build your own first custom connector, which is what I demoed today. Uh, there's a, I just want to give a quick call out. My last thing before I wrap up is a quick call out to uh, a blog that we put out around Ignite, which actually details a lot of these things that are coming up. And so it's a, it's a good resource and it also has some of the AKMS links. So a quick search for tech community, Microsoft graph connectors should showcase this latest blog. So with that, I think I am ready to wrap up. And so let me stop sharing my screen. And uh, I hope that was useful. Over Excellent. To you, thank Vesta. you, Arvin. Really, really cool stuff. And thank you for the updates. Uh, super, super useful. Mm -hmm.